Welcome back to Movies at 2 a.m., the show where we discuss B-movies, bad movies, low-budget movies, box office bombs, critical disappointments, and all manner of obscure film. I'm Bryce Huffman. I'm Irving Thomas. Oh, man. Today, we've got a really funny movie for you. 1997 comedy called Booty Define Call. Define really funny. <laughs> Uh, really funny because the premise is just so simple and relatable. I mean, relatable to a degree. I'll, I'll okay. get in. I'll get into fair, the degree fair, fair in enough. a sec. But yeah, 1997's Booty Call, starring Jamie Fox, Tommy Davidson, Vivica Fox, and Tamala Davis. Yeah, I. I mean, I included Bernie Mac as well, but I mean, the cameos were yeah, the few cameos and far were, between. The cameos were pretty funny in this, but uh, man. What made you put this one on on the calendar? So I actually am a little embarrassed about that. I'm not going to lie to you. And I, I was excited to talk to you about this today because I was like, wait, did I put this on there or did he? Because, <laughs> man, I fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> there are so many other movies we could have covered that are, are, I mean, way better than this. But it's kind of the theme of the show. It's obscure. So You know, I didn't realize how many people had never seen Booty Call until I posted about it like a week or two ago oh really yeah and then i had a bunch of people going like i've heard of this but i've never actually seen it then i had some older dudes say wait you mean booty talk i'm like what is no. bo- that's a porno yeah exactly <laughs> exactly what he said that probably went platinum in the streets so i can tell <laughs> the- you can tell by the name yeah. every barber shop on the east side of detroit exactly i was like no 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 with jamie fox he was like Jamie Foxx is in a porno. What? Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. How crazy would it be? What would your reaction be if someone walked into a barber shop with like the trench coat with a bunch of copies of Booty Talk? I, I Are mean, you going no, back to that barber shop? Yes, for the funny stories that I know I'd be able to tell later. Okay. The misogyny like, in that room is going to be insane. Doug. Barbershops, barbershop misogyny hits so different. <laughs> like I hear people say stuff in there and I'm like, man, I went to an all guy school, but God damn, <laughs> y'all are hateful. Y'all brothers are starving. <laughs> yeah. Like the thirst is, is a different level, which that's the theme of this movie for me. Oh, so yeah. that, that's why unquenchable thirst. <laughs> oh my God. That's the best way to describe it. Yes. So can you can you do the synopsis? Can we go through the synopsis? Yeah, yeah. Before we get uh, before we get into that, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And you've been warned for spoilers. But let's be real. If if you, you probably haven't not watched, watched Booty- this movie, let's let let's be real. Let's yeah. be abundantly. Let's if, keep it abundantly. If you haven't above. watched Booty Call by now, you know it's <laughs> you're probably not going to watch it. No. But the IMDb synopsis is very straight to the point. Two friends who have gone too long without sex set out to get some. A tale as old as time, really. Do you want to go first or should I? Because have my, we ever, I, I have think we ever gone on a double date in the past? I don't believe so. Uh, no, we okay. have not. Okay. But doing it now when we both are in like relationships would be very different. Doing it no, when we were be both great. single would be. No, this, <laughs> this would be great. I mean, I, I, I'm for that. Yeah, I'm that, that sounds that. fun. Back in the day, oh, the streets are a terrible place. <laughs> uh, All right, I'll, feel, I'll go first on okay. the synopsis because I know yours is longer than mine. I tried mine, to mine for this isn't isn't that long. Okay, I tried to keep mine kind of consistent with the IMDb synopsis, so I wrote, "Niggas will do anything for ass." That's it. That's the movie. Oh no, JG, <laughs> give me some applause. Play me some pimping, man. <laughs> I was waiting. I was like, clipping. It's <laughs> like, no, bro, that is the plot. <laughs> that is, bro. That's really it. What's yours? My synopsis is The Hitchhiker's Guide to Blue Ball, Sex Ed 410. The worst two man mission in Baltimore date night history. Two friends, desperate for ass, come hell in high water to get booty from two baddies. Michael Jordan, like Rizal, propels them through the obstacle course that is Baltimore's alleged Chinatown. Rashawn and Buns gamble their lives on the only thing more important than water. Booty. A baddie's butt. Gluteus Maximus. How far will they go? That's that all. is fucking amazing. <laughs> <laughs> JG, get the applause for that. <laughs> I'm glad you like it, man. Yeah, that one. 
I feel like we're going to, that one is probably the most competitive one we've had so far. That's because I had to set my game up when I was trying to freestyle and I didn't have time to prepare. I was just like, yo, I'm, I'm embarrassing my family. right now. <laughs> I'm like, or thank God who- our subscribers aren't super high right now. Cause I'd be getting horsed in comments if we had a strong fan base. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> or is a, uh, as the person who wrote this movie would probably say in very racist manner, you've disgraced your family. <laughs> yeah, I, you know what's crazy? I looked at that and it really threw me off because before I before I looked it up, I, and I want to talk about this in the episode, we covered Cradle to the Grave. Um, surprisingly, did we put Rush Hour on, on our list for this no, season? No, I don't think we did. But I'm like, there are so many, like, what is the connection between racism in movies in the 90s and uh, in early 2000s and black and Asian people? Like, I, I think I, it's because we are both. It's groups. always so funny. <laughs> yeah, it's because we're both groups that have been marginalized by white people, but in very different ways, especially in the States. So it's like that racism between the two groups is always played for laughs in these movies. I was like, Jesus Christ, this is becoming a theme of our show. <laughs> it really like, yo, and then the next but episode. Hilarious. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Everyone that's, that's tuning in. Racism is not funny, but it is like, it's, it's oxymoronic. It Doug, I literally sense. wrote the Asian dude saying nigga, please is hilarious because non black people saying the N word used to really get a lot of laughs. And it's, it's wild that it got so many laughs back in the day. <laughs> They were they were unloading the clip, nigga, nigga, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> yo, yo, this movie has so much racism and a lot of other things that probably didn't age that well, like oh, Jamie Foxx's hair piece. Oh, such a missed opportunity. I have one more line for you from my synopsis. I'm oh, going what? through my notes. You got to say after, it now. After I say... Uh, Rayshawn and Buns gamble their lives on the only thing more important than water. Booty of baddies, but gluteus maximus. How far will they go? I I wrote down the the quote. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for booty. <laughs> I'm really trying this season, man. I, I'm trying. I'm trying to make you proud. <laughs> You're my that boy, is Blue. Incredible. That is incredible. So let's talk about who made this movie. Uh, okay. Jeff Polak, I think is how his name is pronounced. Unfortunately, he, he, passed. he passed in 2013. He or also he was directed. Killed. Well, it said he died of natural causes. But it said he was jog- He was found jogging. True. The True. CIA, y'all. This man was criminally horny. They said he must be stopped. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sorry to, to his family. His family probably will never hear this episode. But <laughs> RIP, because you inspired us to talk about this on our podcast. So yes. He you. also directed Above, Above the, the Rim, Rim which yep. uh, I don't know if you've seen that movie in a while. I've, I've seen it. Uh, it's actually because the first scene is Leon jumping through the mm-hmm. uh, the glass. Yeah. I mean, the window. Yeah. Yeah, I love that movie. Yeah, no, that's really bad. For sure. but, that movie's a classic, even though it's not that good. Oh, it's pretty bad. Yeah. But it has an elite talent in it. Yes. Yes, it does. Holy crap. That movie has a lot of people. This movie has a lot of funny people in it as well. Uh, we went through the main cast, but obviously Bernie Mac's cameo is unreal funny. R.I.P. Yeah. Real one. Yeah, man. R.I.P. for Uncle sure. Uncle Bernie. R.I.P. Uncle Bernie. This movie was written by a guy who literally is credited as Bootsy. Yeah, I was trying to look up. I was like, is it Bootsy Collins? Yo, I, I really wanted bro, to know. I, I really I thought, wanted to know. I thought there was a sliver of a chance that that's where this is where he got his start. And I was like, what? That would be elite. No, but uh, can we talk about this movie Bootsy. actually making money as well? How much How much was the budget and how much did it make? $7 million and made $20 million. That doesn't surprise me. Did that you know? Um, that surprised there were, me. There were people. Obs- how do you promote this movie? You just promote it as a dumb comedy. And in the 90s, there were so many of them that what, like. What does a trailer called Booty Call? Oh, did you not watch the trailer? I don't think I've ever seen the trailer. Oh, man. It is a. It is straight up from 1997. Like it's. Are you taking it's Booty great. Call or Booty Talk? Booty call. This is this is fucking hilarious. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, me. I'm sure I'm sure old pornos from back in the day are also funny, but like Roger Ebert gave this three stars. Really? 
Are you kidding? <laughs> I swear to God, bro. What, what, did, what did he say in his review? He said, in a world where vulgarity is the new international standard, where everyday speech consists entirely of things you wouldn't want your grandmother to hear, booty call nevertheless represents some kind of breakthrough. This is the raunchiest sex comedy I can remember. Sort of an animal house grosses out. Did I laugh? Sure. Do I recount some of the more incredible episodes to friends? You bet. Is the movie any good? Does goodness have anything to do with it? I walk out of movies like this wishing my parents had sent me to more concerts instead of letting me read mad magazines. (laughs) I'm astonished at some of the things I laughed at. But laugh I do. I, it blew my mind, bro. That is a great review for the, like that. Actually, is it, a pretty dang good review for this movie. It blew my mind for real. I mean, and I mean, it, it got a thirty-one percent um, on Rotten Tomatoes. The audience gave it a fifty-nine percent. Um, that makes kind of fair. Yeah, um, it's about the same on IMDb. Four point. I mean, five point four out of ten and a fifty-four Metascore. So I mean. Yeah. It, you know, it, it's one of those movies where, like... It's short. It's easy it, to it's digest. It's very easy to watch. Like, even yeah. with the ad breaks on Tubi, I was only sitting down for, like, an hour and 25 minutes. Oh, that's where you can find this as well. Yeah. Thank you for Tubi. calling that out. Tubi's got a lot of great movies Tubi that is, star niggas. St- St- Tubi is the shit. <laughs> Yo, know, Tubi is... Tubi's pretty damn lit. Like, I'm so happy that I get to be working on a Tubi movie. It's the UPN of, of, of Gen Z, bro. I swear to God. Write that down. <laughs> write that down right now I swear Tubi, to- anyone working at Tubi, if you see this you are the upn of the current generation i would love if we could intern at upn i'm not gonna lie i mean <laughs> not at U- well that would have been cool too that would have been great interning at Tubi would be amazing oh my god man that would be i wish i could just be on like their selection committee like p- watching the movies that people are submitting that would be That'd be a great job to have. Your brain would melt. <laughs> <laughs> you'd get done watching movies and you'd have to instantly let like, go read a book. <laughs> That'd be an interesting way to kill yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, the boy let's, whose brain turned to mush. <laughs> so let's I'm let's sorry. talk about what we like about this movie before well, we get into the negatives. Because I I know you probably have way more negatives actually written down than I do. Well, I was I was gonna hope first that you could just kind of give the the listeners and viewers out there an overview of like it's a very simple right, yeah, plot. Yeah. Very simple movie. Very uh simple. uh Rashawn, played by Tommy Davidson, mm-hmm. and his friend Buns are set to go on Buns a double date. Buns with a Z. Buns with a Z. Are set to go on a double date with Tamala Jones. What 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 was her character's name? Uh it's Nikki. Nikki and Listerine. Listerine. By Listy the way, for sure. By the way. Shout out to Vivica A5. <laughs> whoever named these characters, Bootsy, Bootsy, I assume it was you. I assume it's Bootsy. Whoever named these characters must really hate these characters. Because you have Rashawn, not R A S rush on yeah rush on it's like, like it's like he was trying to like signal away they're like hey I can do rewrites for rush hour watch I can write I can write funny black and Asian jokes um, then there's buns with a Z then there's Listerine with a Y Listerine with a Y yeah yeah That's and crazy. it's just like who why why did we do that why who thought that that was a good idea i wrote down in my notes is that there are some of the worst names i've ever seen they're worse than the names in that uh that clout script we were working on i was gonna bring that up i'm not gonna lie to you yeah like (laughs) for everyone who doesn't know we me and irving were writing a script called clout um about a clout chasing rapper named lil rar rar unfortunately yeah and just all the names were just so dumb and terrible (laughs) <laughs> and this is exactly what I was reminded of when I was watching Booty I, Call. I still want to. We'll, we'll maybe finish that one. We'll too. finish we'll that one. We'll, we'll sell that one to Tubi. Hey, hello, Tubi. If you're out there, holla. Holla, 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 holla. Oh, but no. Okay, I'm sorry. So these two friends, yeah, they're meeting they're going up on a double, a double date. date. Uh, Rashawn. They have a bet. Yeah, so before we even get to the bet, Rashawn has been dating this girl for seven weeks and they have not slept together, which when I say the plot is relatable to a degree this is the part that's not relatable because i don't know how many adults seven months but it was a 90 no, no, day seven re- weeks oh it's seven weeks okay yeah. i'm sorry i'm sorry like, and seven yeah. weeks isn't that long of a time but if you see each other very regularly and you've been dating for seven weeks and you're not like holding out for marriage or for like a very specific reason 
I don't see any adult male doing that. Eh, it's possible. It, Kamala it's, Jones it's, is fine. I mean, she is. <laughs> um, I used to have a huge crush on her back in the day. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I was like, I, Chris, I think we all did. Oh, I was yeah, like, Chris yeah. Rock and Head of State. It makes sense. <laughs> oh, yeah. The thirst, the thirst completely made sense. But I definitely would have gave up because once you get into the the trials and tribulations they go through to actually have sex, oh, at, man. after so, the second time, I'd have been like, no, nah, I'm good. Yeah. So I wrote that the, down in my notes, too. But we'll, yeah, we'll they, they go on a double date. Uh, Buns and Listerine kind of hit it off, but kind of hate each other. It's like a weird love hate thing going on. And then that obviously, old trope. I don't like you. I don't like you. Yeah, but like and then they they both they have very their private similar. moment and they're like Yeah. All right. Uh so they go on the double date, they get back to the girl's apartments and they're like, Oh, we're about to get some and then every time they're like about to have sex, or I guess for Jamie Foxx's characters, uh for Buns' case, in the middle of sex, yeah, something happens where they have to go to the convenience store and grab something or something interrupts them every time and Eventually, they end up at the hospital. He gets shot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Tommy Davidson's character Which gets shot. I wrote shot. down was racist. I was like, "We this theme of racism is 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 in the DNA of our show now." It, <laughs> it's like we're the Republican Party. Racism's just a part of what we do. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, that joke's gonna pay off in the next episode. Trust me. <laughs> but yeah, man, it's like every time they're almost there something happens and it's it it's relatable in the sense that like men really be going out of their way to get some i I know in my younger ho phase like i definitely went out of my way to get booty that i i should have just gone home and gone to sleep it's a tale as old as time yes it really is niggas are thirsty and Ooh we <laughs> Buns is the thirstiest nigga on the planet, bro. <laughs> Verbatim, I have that in my notes. So yeah, I wrote it down multiple times, bro. <laughs> Me too. I was just a lot of a lot of my notes are this is disgusting. This is atrocious. This is preposterous. Oh my goodness, this <laughs> is criminally are horny. Diabolically horny. <laughs> Diabolical is the word I wish I had used. I was using criminal, and that doesn't even do it justice. It I'll, really doesn't. Bro, and I know I, I shouldn't even jump to this, but one of the scenes that really sticks out to me, I wrote down when they're at the hospital, and he's pretending to be the doctor, and he one, he, he uh, helps a woman deliver her child, but... He's touching preg- a pregnant woman's belly, rubbing it, and he's like, "Oh yeah, round belly, you kind of cute." I said, "Yo, <laughs> what?" Yeah. I said, "Bro, this man would be underneath the jail. Stop <laughs> fucking playing with me, yo. yo." Yeah, man, it it's like we all have that one friend who's just way too horny for his own good. Oh, a thousand percent. And Buns is just like an amalgamation of. All the horny niggas on. He's Earth. the worst wingman as well. Well, no, the 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 movie is slick because at first you think he would be the worst wingman ever, and then you realize that Listerine is a freaky motherfucker too, and it's like, oh, okay, this worked out. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's one of those movies where like, I there and I, I let me know what point it was for you, but for me it was. The second time they have to stop having or like interrupt the sex, that's when I would have been like, "Yeah, nigga, it's late. I'm going home." Like when the when the one convenience store was closed, it was like, "That's a time." Like that's, I'm canceling. Like, Why would you buy a lambskin condom? <laughs> yeah, and they spent like thirty eight dollars on condoms in 1997. You know, <laughs> the price of the brick went up. Well, they are in Baltimore. <laughs> That's a 10. That's a 10. For everyone who doesn't get that reference, go watch The Wire. But, like, that. (laughs) The price of the brick. (laughs) Man, the price of the nut went up, bro. They went through so much. That man has now medical bills attached to the fact that he was Uh, trying to get a nut. That. That's actually my favorite part of the film. I wrote that down because I kept going. And this happens with every movie when I'm taking notes. I'm just like, oh, okay, this is my favorite line. This is my favorite. This is my favorite scene. No, at the end where he gets shot and the doctor. And so do should we jump or should I wait? You, you can jump. Okay. I mean, I, I ran through the basic. Plot. I have to just tell you all my favorite scenes. So like Bryce said, they're both trying to have sex um, on this double date that's 
<laughs> gone a little bit further. And I think this is like the fourth or fifth attempt to try and have sex that goes wrong. Yeah, I want to say the fourth. Um, and then uh, what is her name? Nikki, Tamla Jones's character. They she finds out that they made a bet because a part of the, a part of this movie. The the, the uh, this movie is a good uh, think piece. I will say, like it, it's it a conversation starter because male validation is real. It is. Um, the from the jump at the beginning where they introduce Rashawn and Buns, Rashawn is always focused on what Buns thinks about him and how he's perceived. He's like, Oh, I want to be this manly man. Like, you know, what yeah. is Buns gonna think if I do this? Like, it's a lot of posturing for his friend, yeah, it's a lot of posturing more for than the woman that he allegedly loves, right? So she constantly brings it up, like, Why are you so concerned about like what, what Buns thinks or what your friends think? like if you're telling me that you you love me like what are we doing here so at the end (laughs) no no so after after their fifth attempt to try to have sex she finds out that buns and rashawn actually made a bet that who was going to get laid first after their double date it wasn't even get laid first they just both had to have sex before the sun came up oh right right right. okay okay thank you which is that's still weird. Are they vampires? Yeah, that's kind of weird, right? <laughs> Vampire like, and birth- we're, 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 That's another theme, horniness. <laughs> <laughs> Niggas be horny all the way from Pootie motherfuckers, Tang motherfuckers be racist to Vampire in and, Brooklyn and be- to this to the movie we're talking about next week. Niggas be horny. <laughs> Niggas be horny, and it be getting them in trouble. That is a theme. So they, um, once they find out. Um, the thing that happens before the hospital is um what what's about to happen is it the dog no it has nothing to do with the dog um buns is like all right because tamla jones character nikki finds out that about the bed and they're like we're not about to have sex with y'all anymore like you guys suck and then buns is like all right well i'm out and he tries to stop a cab black man in baltimore the, yes. ca- the cab driver gets out and like and thinks he's trying to rob him and pulls out the strap only <laughs> it's i'm i'm so glad you said strap only of all things Why? you could have said because when he pulled it out i literally was like Man, this Italian dude is like really afraid of black people to be a cab driver in Baltimore. <laughs> it's like you can't get any clients. What are you doing? He didn't have any background, any history of Baltimore. He's just like, I'm gonna be yeah. a taxi driver in the blackest one of them. Like, <laughs> yeah, uh, bro. So it's, yeah, it's hilarious. Buns gets out. Um, the cab driver gets out and points a gun at Buns, and everyone's like, "Whoa, whoa, relax." Um, and then. The cab driver gets distracted. Buns tries to take the gun from him. He accidentally shoots it. The bullet ricochets and hits Rashawn. It's like a it's a flesh wound, right? Yeah, it just hits it hits him in the leg, but it doesn't like destroy his leg or anything. So they actually steal the taxi because the (laughs) the the cab driver runs rob him. He drops the gun. Yeah, and then he runs away. Um and then they go again. Racism. (laughs) Hey, Hey man. Hey, man, I don't know. You said it, not me. So then they they rush him to the hospital in the taxi, and he has insurance, but all of this is happening spur of the moment, so he doesn't have his wallet with him. Right. Which I wrote down another another great conversation started in this film, talking about the U.S. health (laughs) healthcare system. I I wrote that down, too. I was like, man, all these years later, and healthcare still treats niggas like shit. (laughs) That was my favorite part of the movie. And when I they know, get to the hospital? Yeah, when they get to the hospital and they're like, oh, my God, he's been shot. Like, help him. It's like, what's his insurance? It's like, he doesn't have his card on him. We can't help you. <laughs> so, <laughs> Bro, that my favorite part was when, so there's a there's a scene where they're about to uh, sew up his leg. Oh, I was leading and, up and, to that. Yeah, yeah and, was, and they have him sitting next to a bunch of other dudes who are about to go into surgery for different things. One dude realizes he's about to get his nuts cut his, off because he has prostate. testicular cancer. Yeah, his breast And he removed. switches their charts. So Tommy Davidson, uh, who had already been numbed and drugged at that point, uh, is like too loopy to like communicate to the doctors that they mixed up and he's not supposed to Which get Which doesn't his, make sense because if you get shot, I don't know... 
If they wouldn't, be on a they wouldn't have you in the same place as people who are yeah. getting ready for. Also, why would they set the surgery for testicular cancer at like 4 a.m.? That doesn't make any sense. Didn't make any sense in the world. Yeah, like, that room was full. Yeah, it's like not only does the guy get his nuts cut off, it's like you do it at four in the fucking morning. They look like Come they on. were camping out for Jays. <laughs> I'm just saying, bro. I'm just Dog, saying. Dog, I wrote, it looked like they were camping out for the PSP back in 05. I'm screaming. I'm <laughs> screaming. Um, but yeah, so uh, the way they swap that, places. Yeah, so he's in, he's like about to get nipped. And then Tamla Jones runs in and says, he doesn't have insurance. And, the, and they all immediately the stop and kick him out. out. <laughs> the doctors, God damn it. <laughs> I'm going golfing. <laughs> storms out of the room i was yeah. just like this is a there are elements of this film that are amazing i under i was shocked that robert ebert gave it a three three stars you that, know that's I, mind-boggling to me i but. think he gave it a three because much like me when i was watching it again last night and i have i hadn't seen this movie in maybe like four or five years so not mm-hmm. that long compared to some of the other movies we've watched but it, it had been a minute uh, I think what he gave it three stars for was getting laughs when you don't want to laugh at something like there are so many scenes that's that I was fair. like, I'm above this. I'm I can't laugh at this, but I was still laughing my ass off at that's it. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah, and that's that's rare, man. There's a lot of there's a lot of uh comedies that have scenes kind of like the uh the convenience store with the Indian guys. Like that is a the scene Pakistani. that shouldn't at all be funny. I think I have a comment about him pulling out the Uzi. <laughs> oh, oh, oh no, I so, said it's I said it's outrageous. Yeah. I yeah, so outrageous. a guy comes in when they go back to the convenience store, uh Third trip to a convenience store, second time at this particular one. The first one. trip, they accidentally got the wrong condoms. Uh, right. They're about to have sex. And then Nikki asks Rashawn, do you have condoms? He has a condom. That's one of my favorite scenes as well. Um, and then and she has a dog named Killa. And Killa, like. He mm-hmm. drops, he fumbles the condom trying to put it on. And Killa <laughs> chews it up. It turns into a chew toy condom. And he kind of looks at it for a second, just like how niggas would, and be like, mm. especially when you're young, it's like, can I get away with this? <laughs> if you're the na- uh, a nasty mofo. And she was like, you weren't going to try and use that on me. Are you out your mind? And he's like, he tries to play it off like, nah. But then they go to the store. So they get lamb. They go to lamb- the first store. They go to the store the first time. They get lambskin condoms. They try again. The girls are like, these are lambskin. They don't protect you against HIV. So then they go out again, and this time they go to the uh, the, the other, yeah they go to the other convenience store, and they get the condoms. They kind of get you know joked on by the dudes at the counter or whatever. Boom! They go back to the apartment. They try again. Uh, Tommy Davids is about to go down on his girl, and she's like, "Do you don't have a dental dam? You're not going to be able to protect against you know STDs that way." So then they go back to the convenience store for the third time. They've been interrupted. They go out. They get the, uh, the the plastic wrap, but then a dude tries to rob the store, and then the dude behind the counter empties the fucking Uzi clip. Yeah. Just outrageous. shooting up everything in the store, outrageous. not hitting the guy. It didn't hit one I, that, that's the part that killed me. I was like, bro, the aim is just like... It, it reminded me of the scene in Next Day Air it reminded- when uh, Mike Epps <laughs> unloads the fucking AK and doesn't hit anything. I was gonna say it reminded me of Meteor Man when they were chasing him down the street and they couldn't hit, <laughs> they couldn't hit a thing. <laughs> oh my goodness! I said, "Oh my!" That God. is that's amazing. I'm like, I've never seen somebody strike out like this trying to pull up on their ops. <laughs> <laughs> this is ridiculous. Yeah, so he unloads the clip, and it's like it's a scene that it logically shouldn't be that funny, but I was dying at that scene. <laughs> Did. Did this come out? This came out after uh, Menace to Society, correct? Yeah. You yeah. think that's a an ode to o, uh, to O Dog? I think so, especially okay. because the dude, the one dude behind the counter goes, um, "Wait, get your black ass back out here! I can't see you. I don't trust you." <laughs> and I was like, "Oh shit!" They really went there. That's and it. then, and then Bun says, "This is why I'm a fan of immigration reform laws." <laughs> And I was like, Jesus Christ. So let's, let's crank up the racism, y'all. Yeah, the racism in this movie hit very different than I was than I remembered. So what what other what other uh fails do they have after 
they make it back with the there's the because I want to ask I had I wrote down okay, in my notes so I want to know what the, your what the last your, fail what, is the the plastic wrap scene right so there's the a dog. scene where the dog no that happens the second time they go out when, when they go the to dog? get the condoms the the latex condoms oh okay okay, okay. yeah they lose the dog so which they, is the worst probably I'm, I assume you're gonna probably say the Uzi but um I think the Uzi because it's just like they almost died over sex that they could have had and been done with I hours wrote down before. and this is not something that I believe in whoever <laughs> whoever's listening in and watching this is going to be like wow there are so many things I'm learning about you through this podcast <laughs> and that's not necessary it's probably not a great thing but hey man I have CTE that's what I'm chalking <laughs> it up to okay Antonio Brown no I didn't say I'm Antonio Brown now hold on <laughs> um, but I had the question for you. What were you just talking about? <laughs> what was the worst fail? I said it's for sure the the, the second time they go to that oh, same okay. convenience store. Just because like, they almost get shot. Then they try to put the plastic wrap on. And they stupidly put it over their faces instead of putting it over the woman's waist. It's just, it's so many bad decisions on their part. <laughs> There's so many moments where it's just like... When would you have given up? I, I think I would have given up. Was it the dog? Because I said after the dog. It was the, yeah, I think after the dog. Like, Or or better yet, I would have given up before I went out to get the plastic wrap. Because it, it's just so... To me, it's absurd to like... <laughs> it's like, okay, you're you're telling me that not only do you have plastic wrap, that we can use. You just don't want to use it. <laughs> but now I have to go out to the store. I have to leave your apartment it. for the it. third time to get some booty. It's just like, nah, like I'll just see you tomorrow, bro. Like we had a good run today. I'll see you later. Cause <laughs> I don't condone this, but I don't judge as long as it is consensual and safe. But I said at, well, no, I wouldn't say I don't condone this. This this is not my lifestyle, but I am not judging anyone as long as it's consensual. I respect sex workers. I just want to throw that out there. Um, Trying not to get canceled. I like it. I said after she tried to send him out for the dental dam, really he should have gave up and got on back pages. <laughs> they were making them work way too hard for something that they both wanted to do. Yes. Uh, I so that that's because, one of the because things when and I want I, I want I want to clarify this because I don't want to get canceled and I I hate sounding like a white comedian talking about cancel culture. Okay, Joe Rogan. Oh Jesus, <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> you haven't said the n word enough to be Joe Rogan. Yes, I have. <laughs> yes, I have. Um, I don't know. He says nigga a lot. Hey man, that's not my prerogative. Um, I want I want to I want to uh, uh, clarify because. When she sends him out for the dental dam before he's like, oh, we don't have any dental dam. All right. Well, I guess we just can't do like perform oral sex. And she's like, no, <laughs> but I want to. <laughs> I want you to. So after that, like they, they could have had sex and like they were both just trying to get it on. So he didn't have to go out and get that dental dam and then get shot. Like, let, let's keep it a buck, man. Like. Yeah. Too much effort was put into this process. I would have gave up. I would have thrown the tail. Yeah. And I think the the movie is really like a testament to like the resiliency of someone who hasn't got that, that nut. Oh, wait. It's well, like, just go it. home and jerk off. You'll be much better. Like, think about how much money they spent not getting ass. <laughs> mm. They won because they, they were gambling in, at the beginning of the movie. But that's the only time I saw them get money. The rest yeah. of the time. They were losing they money were, every other bit of the movie, bro. <laughs> they were sounding like some broke boys. I wrote that down in my notes. I'm not going to lie. Buns, when, and, when, Buns in particular was being on, a broke On boy. their date before they go back to Nikki's apartment, they're eating in a Chinese restaurant where I wrote down that. Shout out to whoever the actor that played that waiter is hilarious <laughs> and racist. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Um, but they, uh, Vivica A. Fox, they set it up to where her and Buns aren't supposed to 
get together like they're right. to- total opposites and like bryce said earlier they actually have a lot more in common there's some freaks the freaks come out at night like that that song that's a missed opportunity they probably it's, couldn't uh, afford that it's but gary watanabe is that actor they should have put that song in in the film freaks come out at night oh my goodness but you know who no please please continue, continue. so that the the waiter that guy mm-hmm you know, you know what I recognized him from and just couldn't place it? He's the Asian guy in 16 Candles. So he's used to playing very racially stereotyped characters, unfortunately. He also answer. plays Ling in Mulan and Mulan 2. Actually, yeah, okay, I did I did see that. I yeah, see that. that I that's wild. I'm um, sorry. Continue. No, no, you're you're perfectly <laughs> fine. But Vivica Vivica A Fox is like this independent woman, like corporate job, like boss lady. Big, big freak energy, which we find out later, but they're eating at this Chinese restaurant and uh, she's talking about, I want to order Moet and I want to order lobster (laughs) and Buns is like, I think I wrote down the exact quote, but he's like, you going to order the most expensive things on the menu? And she's like, yeah, I have a platinum card. He's like, I got a card, too. I got a gas card. <laughs> and then, so, I mean, he, he was, was like, like I can get, have a car. He said, I can get gas in like 30 different states. I'm just like, oh, my goodness. And then, yeah, exactly. It's like, you don't even got a car. I was just like, oof. These brothers were busters. Yeah. But to your point, the only time they were getting money is when they weren't chasing ass. True. So before we go into our favorite quotes, because I feel like that's that's what's coming up next. Uh, I do want to say there's one thing I saw that I thought was super underrated in this movie. Uh, there is a one shot take that starts with a girl lighting a cigarette and moves down to the sec er, down one floor to them playing pool. OK, that is an excellent shot. I was like. Why is this shot in this stupid ass movie? This doesn't this it doesn't make sense. It doesn't fit. But it's so I, good. <laughs> I'll be honest, I don't think I noticed that. I oh, I noticed. Because I, I noticed it just because I was uh it reminded me of there's a shot in the newest John Wick movie that like is an overhead shot moving through a bunch of different rooms and the cameras it's all one take moving really effortlessly. Uh, and I was just looking at it. I was like, man, like they put that in booty call. <laughs> they put all that effort into making that shot happen in a movie called booty call. I want to say it's I'm I'm actually dying internally. How casually we're just throwing out the phrase booty call. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, um, before we get into favorite lines, I wanted to mention two other of my favorite scenes the footsie scene under the table when they get back to the apartment i have that down incredible that was my favorite scene before the healthcare, right the doctor yeah. scene uh and then the the impressions during the sex scene jamie fox busted out a jesse jackson impression a mike tyson impression I, I an mlk that. impression who's the, the last the only one that didn't age was the bill cosby one <sighs> That Bill Cosby one was scary. Oh, I was yeah. like, because it's like it's a sex scene involving Bill Cosby, and it's just it. Yeah, I said <laughs> it's it's not great. I said that shit was based on true events. Unfortunately, Oof. yeah, that's. Hmm. I have a lot of questions for you, so take it where take the episode wherever you want, because we're gonna we're going on a journey, everyone. <laughs> after he gets done with this, whatever next segment you want to do, because I have a I, lot. I, gonna, I have a lot of questions. I was you. just gonna ask you who was your best. Who did you think did the best performance? Tommy Davidson. I and it's not close. I disagree. I think it was Jamie Foxx for being Sorry. unbelievably thirsty the whole movie. No, Tommy Davidson. I think Jamie Foxx is probably actually like that in real life. But Jamie Foxx had to wear that dumbass headpiece. And be diabolically horny. But he is CTE. And I think naturally he's probably diabolically horny. <laughs> I would not be shocked. He's played that character in so many different movies. This is true. That this is, is probably true. him. Let's be, let's be honest. <laughs> let's be it's honest. Either, it's, either, it's either definitely him or definitely one of his best friends that it's he him. is for sure basing it on. It's him, bro. He throws he he throws Hollywood parties. It's him, bro. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> let's let's keep it in the book. And hey, man, as long as it's consensual, you can be as criminally horny as as you want. Like, well, hey. if it's consensual, hopefully it's not criminal. <laughs> that's 
Thank you. Thank you. I will let you defend me in court. This, <laughs> this, this guy is good. <laughs> this guy is good. All right. So let me, uh, if, if I get to choose, like, let me just throw some questions at you. Let's, yep. let's do a question round. Okay. Would you take advice from buns? No, never, ever, ever. You can't take advice from someone who wears their hair like that and goes by buns with a Z. Okay. Fair question. Are you ready? Next question. Yep. Who are you taking as a sex educator? Nikki, played by Tamela Jones, or Coach Carr, played by, I don't know, the actor's name from Mean Girls? Oof. Because I'm although say- Coach Carr was a pedophile. Yes, he was. The advice that he gave was effective. If it you are a parent, up, but it if wasn't are, effective. If if you are a parent with a te- teenage kid, who do you want teaching your child? I would say Tamela Jones, okay. only because her character. So th- that's another thing with this movie. There's moments where it feels like this movie was written by two different people who have two opposing views on casual sex, and there are moments where Tamela Jones's character legitimately just seems like someone who doesn't like the casual sex hookup culture or whatever. There's other moments where it seems like she actually has a problem with sex in general. And in the moments where she seems to just not like hookup culture, I would take advice from her, okay. you know, and, and give that to a kid, you know, okay. just, you know, late sex condoms are safe or, you know, you know, if you're doing oral, a dental dam will protect you from STDs. All of those things are like things that most kids probably don't want to hear, but you know, it's good advice. Okay. Coach Carr, on the other hand, said, if you have sex, no, no. If you have sex, you will get pregnant and die. It's and possible. while It's and all while, yes, probable. Yes, that is very probable. If you look at the way that all the characters in Mean Girls respond, none of them take his advice. Okay. Fair. You see what I'm saying? Like, fair, fair with, enough, fair and granted, enough. Tommy Davidson in this movie was really just trying to get some, so he was listening to whatever she wanted. So it's it's a little one sided there, but I'm for sure taking her advice. Okay. Would you, Would you listen to Coach Carr over her? No, absolutely. Oh, okay. <laughs> just like I was curious. Like you asked the question, I was like, was that like a debate in your head? No, not at all. Not <laughs> at all. But if if you had answered opposite, I would have told you I got you, and Chris Hansen would have walked through that door. <laughs> Bryce Huffman. <laughs> speaking of which, um, well, I shouldn't say speaking of which because I, I don't have shit to do with uh, <laughs> with with Chris Hansen. When you were watching this movie, did it take you back to like the most effort you ever put in to get some booty? Kind of, but not really because I've tried to bury those those <laughs> thoughts. Well, well, of the thoughts that have not been buried, what is just one example? Have you ever like, heard the Marvin Gaye song "Ain't No Mountain High"? Yeah, of course. <laughs> all right <laughs> enough said <laughs> wait that's that ain't no mountain high back in the day hey man <laughs> when the, the when those hormones hey man when them hormones are first starting to appear shit is wild your brain doesn't work your brain doesn't develop until you're 26 for real so let let's talk about 25 26 when you're a teenage boy and you're trying to date and it's your first entry we went to basically essentially a montessori school let's keep it above <laughs> her yeah. long cathedral <laughs> great shout education out, yeah, shout out shout to her long cathedral we've shouted them out in season one we've shouted them out before grade school you know i have no regrets but we were sheltered <laughs> we were very sheltered for sure i was not prepared for the world <laughs> and let me tell you the world was crazy the world I'm was still be- not prepared <laughs> The world was beautiful. The world was too beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> you saw those booties when you got to Rennie and you were like, ooh, we. <laughs> hey, man, let me tell you something. Ain't no mountain high. Ain't no mountain low. Well, actually, I shouldn't say that. JG, you might have to cut that out. I ain't, I, we, don't got, we don't got Marvin Gaye <laughs> lawsuit money. <laughs> Let's keep it a buck. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely thought of like, the the lengths I've gone to went, or went to as a younger man. I'm not even going to put you on the spot because. I would love to know what that is. But uh, I'm, oh I'm, no, it, it's it's simple. I <laughs> it, it it was scary, so that music is fitting. Uh, there's it's a tie. Either it okay. was the time that um, and it's I had a, a, and I had a backup plan in case I didn't get booty. So it, it, it ended up working out just fine. But there was a time where I drove from my internship in Ann Arbor to Lansing to go on a date with a girl, 
mm-hmm. who I had met at a party. And my whole thing was like, well, if it doesn't go well, I have so many friends who are still at Michigan State that I can just, it's a Friday, I can just hang out and have fun, which is exactly what I did after the date. Um, you the, took the Eli Manning approach. You said, I'm going to throw the Hail Mary and we'll see what happens. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Right. And thank God that date. Did you win the Super Bowl? No, that, thank God that date didn't go well because that girl is crazy. Um, and she's not listening to this. It's fine. That um, was the plot twist I wasn't expecting. Right. Uh, I guess for, wasn't that bad back in the day. If you did that now, I'd be like, brother. Uh, well, I did it before I had my Ultima. This was back when I had the Pathfinder, which oh, was, it, which was much wasn't better the, on. The Armada was insane. No, the Armada wasn't as bad on gas as no, the Explorer. That's what I mean. That the was the my, Explorer back was, in the day. I drove my mom's Ford Explorer from like 2001 that went from my mom to my brother to my sister to me. And the gas mileage in that car was atrocious. Like, I could go. That's nostalgia for yeah, you. Yeah, dude, I could fill I up used to that remember, car. Because, you know, I, I feel like you and I have always been like, yo, like, from the time we started driving, like, I don't ask my friends for gas money. Like I was asking is, for it but, back then because that's how bro- bad it was. <laughs> this brother, you step into his passenger seat. He's like, I'm sorry, bro, but I'm coming to collect. It was just like being in the wire, bro. It's like, damn. <laughs> it's like, put, this man got his hand out like uh, the wife from the Jetsons. Like, you know the routine. Yeah. <laughs> throw, mm-hmm. throw me a five ball. <laughs> Yeah, but that's going to get us around the corner. I'm going to need another five to get us back. (laughs) It's like, God damn. You're not wrong at all. (laughs) But it was either going to Lansing for booty or there was a time where I was on a date with a girl. I had already had sex with this girl once Mm -hmm. and she wanted to go to Culver's. And there's no. Culver's is delicious. Shout out to Culver's. It is, right? But there's no Culver's anywhere near us. So I had to go all the way out into the deep burbs to get some Culver's and by the time we got there they were closed and instead of saying oh let's just hit any of these fast food spots around it that are still open she was like man there's a Culver's 20 minutes from here let's go oh my god that sound effect is right JG (laughs) (laughs) it was steep (laughs) this brother has PTSD Um, and guess what I went to that damn Culver's (laughs) <laughs> I respected buns. <laughs> I respect it. <laughs> as long as you didn't do any impressions, that's good. So, I did not. <laughs> so can you describe some of my favorite scenes? Can you describe the footsie scene? Because that's that's oh, my right, right. That's my second favorite scene and uh best line. So they get back to the crib after the double date. They're and why I'm campaigning for Tammy uh Tommy Davison is uh my best, best performance. Yeah. So they're playing cards and Jamie Foxx, uh, Buns, you and motherfuckers Listy. are freaky. Yeah, and I wrote Buns that. And I wrote that playing down. Footsie under the table and getting like really into Footsie, like more than any human being has ever gotten into f- playing Footsie. Just like I've never rubbing on it. each other and like literally moaning right next to their friends who they're on this double date with. Uh, and then I said it was preposterous in my notes. And then at a certain point, Don, Tommy Davidson tries to play Footsie as well. It starts working. It starts working, but then out of nowhere. Him and Buns accidentally touch feet. Well, no, because um, Nikki notices that they're both being overly crim- like, criminally horny. Like way like, too horny. Both couples are playing footsie and she's like, nah. So they stop. But then, of course, Jamie Foxx's character, his name is Buns with the Z. Like, let's be real. He's like, all right, run it back. And <laughs> Tommy, did, uh, but no, continue. Okay, sorry. I just wanted to throw that in there. Because yeah, you're saying it, they start playing. Yeah, it, eventually, they the two dudes are playing foots with each other, not realizing it until it's too late. And then Tommy Davidson realizes, and he's like, well, Jamie Foxx, so can I say the best line? Yeah, yeah, I was, okay. I was queuing for you to it's, say the line. It's like a scene. Okay, I'm sorry. Jamie Foxx is like, ooh, girl, your feet are kind of strong, but the softest feet in the world. And that's when Tommy Davidson is like, wait, what the fuck? <laughs> he said, ew, ew, man. Man, if you don't get them big jungle rock alligator feet off my man, you can snatch a salmon going upstream with them eagle claws. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yo, bro. Which, he was he was in a bag when he delivered that line. All right. If we're doing best line, try to narrow it down to three, because I wrote down like 10 of these. OK, uh, another my other best line is the doctor 
we talked about already. It's like, he doesn't have insurance. Everybody get out of here. I'm going golfing. Um, <laughs> when, what is her name? Oh, I'm sorry. Listy or Listerine played by Vivica Fox and Buns are getting it on. And Bryce alluded to this earlier, but Jamie Foxx, one of her kinks is she likes impressions of powerful men. Oh, oof. And <laughs> it's very problematic. Let's, let's, let's keep it a buck. It's very problematic. When he, so Bun starts doing a Jesse Jackson impression and he says, I am somebody. <laughs> Yo, that scene is so good though. <laughs> and Vivica Fox's character chants it back to him. I am somebody. <laughs> I am. And she, he picks her up on his shoulder and he's carrying her over to have sex. And I, I just thought that was fucking hilarious. Yeah. Uh, for me, it was uh, <laughs> if I have to if I have to narrow it down because I wrote so many of them. Uh, if it was me, I would have that ass bouncing like the low rider in a Dr. Dre video. <laughs> I love that line. Um, at one point, again, when okay, so uh, Buns and Listerine when they're in the hospital are searching for Rashawn because they they know he's his papers have been switched and he's going to get his prostate removed. No, no, his nuts removed. No, it was his prostate. No, it was his nuts. It was his prostate. I bet $5 it was his nuts. I don't got it. I'm moving to New York. I don't got it. <laughs> he's getting something removed. Um but uh they're looking for him and it's kind of like a Scooby Doo situation cuz the the this is the nurse? Yeah, right? the, the intake lady is looking for them with one of the security guards. It was a police officer. Oh, I just thought it was a security guard at the police mall officer, or I'm at the sure. uh, hospital. Pretty sure it's a police officer. Oh, well, either way. Five dollars, we can balance this out. No, nah, keep going. No, nah, um, I'm, not, I'm, not I'm not about to bet on that. <laughs> but Bun, Buns and Listerine are looking together and they, they see the intake um, nurse or receptionist, whatever she was, and they go into a room and Buns is like, he locks the door and is like, this is our opportunity to have sex. Um, and she's like, do you have a condom? And he looks around. And, he and she's like, it. no glove, no love. That's my favorite. Oh my god! My dad used to tell us that when when we were all in um in high school, that was like one of his catchphrases. Like you 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 all don't need to be having no babies, no glove, no love. So I was like, oh, this this one hits close to home. <laughs> um, what is it? There's a mistake. He doesn't have insurance. Oh, and then of course my other favorite line. So. Nikki has a dog named Killer that we alluded mm -hmm. to earlier. The dog talks. Well, he barks, and they give the dog subtitles. Um, the dog talks shit to Rashawn because he's like, Bro, The whole movie. The whole movie because it's like, yo, you're running up on my lady. Fuck you. Um, and he barks, motherfucker, your ass is mine <laughs> at the end. Well, can we talk about that scene, please? With the with the wrap, the plastic wrap, because oh my oh, god, right. that's so, such an important part of the movie. <laughs> so they finally are about to get get it on after all of the all of this trouble, and she stop she stops in the middle of making out to say like, wait a minute, where's Killer the dog? And he's like, oh, don't worry, he's fine. I uh, you know, he I, he's taken care of. And they just show him outside, like plastic wrapped into a box. So he can't move or anything. But that happens to Rashawn earlier because he doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> right. He's he he accidentally like almost dies wrapping himself in the plastic wrap. It's it's ridiculously stupid, but to perform oral sex. Yeah. Um, Niggas are trying to die almost died just to get some cheeks multiple times in this movie. We've all been there. <laughs> I just want to. I just want to keep it abundant. I don't, I don't. I don't know about almost died. Driving to Culver's was not a life or death thing. <laughs> I don't know what you were up to, but yeah. And then, uh, oh my! And then the last line I wanted to to bring up. So Buns ends up impersonating a doctor. Yep. At the uh, hospital, and obviously, when you're impersonating a doctor, other people at the hospital try to get you to do shit. One nurse is talking to him, and he's like, "Yeah, I'm a, uh, I'm Jamaican and German. I'm, <laughs> I'm Jamaican. Jamaican." And then he leaves, like, because he knows he's about to be screwed if he tries to actually do stuff. And then all she says is, "Damn Caribbean medical schools." <laughs> 
Oh my goodness! No, this movie is it. it definitely makes me laugh. Um, so let, I, I want to wrap because I know where we've been talking for close to an hour. But we've I, been talking for almost the entirety of the movie Booty Call. That's why it's easy <laughs> to watch. It's only like a, a hundred and twenty minutes or something like that, right in that time frame. No, it's a uh, seventy-nine minutes, an hour and nineteen. I said hundred and twenty, bro. Yeah, that's two hours. Oh, I'm tripping. My math. Was... <laughs> I know. Like once you said it, I knew exactly what you meant. So I was like, let me let me just help my boy out real no, quick. No, I appreciate it. Ooh, ooh. No, Additional no flowers. Child left, no child left me, huh? Additional flowers. And I think I know who yours is gonna go to. It's it's um it's definitely Jamie Foxx. Um it's definitely the woman at the beginning of the movie that we didn't talk about that was cussing out oh, Jamie Foxx. They're shooting my goodness. They're they're rolling dice, they're gambling, and then they look over and a woman is cussing out or her like cheating boyfriend her, or yeah, cheating boyfriend something like or that. her husband or whatever. Yeah. And Buns is like, You don't have to take that and she says I wrote it down because I was like, She went in on him. It was actually insane. She said, let me make sure. Oh, no, that, ooh, ooh, I need to save that one. She said, oh, hold up one motherfucking minute, god damn it. When I need Howard Cosell, I will call Howard Cosell. Take your fake dreaded ass, pick up Mighty Mouse, and she was referring to Tommy Davidson's character because he's so scrawny, and skippity-doo your rank Scooby-Doo ass home. <laughs> I was like, damn, yo, this is impressive. Yeah, uh, yeah. So she gets flowers. A lot of the side characters are were my favorite. Same man, I, I I said Bernie Mac additional flowers, obviously. R.I.P. Uncle Bernie. Uh, and then I put SWV for making the song "Can We," which plays during the end credits. I love that. I love. Yeah, that. I had not heard that song in so long. There's a song about booty when they're on their date at the club too that I that I want to just <laughs> give right. a shout out to. You're totally right. So let let's wrap it up and let's the perfect way I think to wrap it up is what what is your sequel to this our, our okay. new segment. So yeah, in lieu of drinking game, we're doing what sequel or reboot would it be? So the sequel, we can't talk about racism and horniness and then do a drinking game that is a horrible <laughs> comment we will get canceled yes. even though we're we're not where we want to be and we're building our following we will get canceled we'll get or we'll, get the wrong following that i do not want a bunch of insults. fire drill i don't know i hear it but okay we're gonna edit, edit that out uh the sequel would be and i wrote if this came out in the early 2000s like with the same cast only a few years after the movie came out, booty call to redial. I like that. All right. Then I, like I have, that. if it came out in the 2010s, it would be a less literal remake called you up with just like the letter U up like I a like text. That. And then if it was one of those long overdue comedy sequels with the original cast and it was released today, you're going to sound a would, crazy person when you hear me. It would be called booty call three divorced and thirsty. I like that. I like that a lot. All right, are you ready? Or divorced and desperate, depending on, you know. They're both fit, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so mine is booty call straight to voicemail. And I took a page oh out of your book. Goodness, and I took a page amazing. out of your book. It's a horror film. <laughs> <laughs> the year is still 1997. 20 minutes after Nikki and Rashawn are done doing the doo-doo brown, they receive a call in the middle of the night. Rashawn answers. It'd be the day. Hello? It doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> Dead silence. Dead silence. Nikki calls for Rashawn from the bed. Who is it? Rashawn speaks into the phone again. Hello? Is anyone there? A squeak noise travels through the phone. Rashawn looks down. He jumps back from sheer panic. A chew toy condom. He checks outside the window. The plastic wrap is gone. A killer is on the loose. And he's working with Bill Cosby to seek revenge. I... <laughs> I don't know what to say to that. I really don't. Let's end it. Uh, yeah, man. That, that, so that's our conversation on Booty Call, man. If you haven't seen this movie, uh, you're missing out on, it's on Tubi if a you very check short, it out. fun ride. Um, it's on Tubi. Pun intended for Bun's sake. I like that. I like that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, until next time, I'm Bryce. I'm Irving. Peace. Peace. <laughs>